So nothing like getting home from a business trip <clears throat> and having a new cooker waiting for you. I wish it wasn't so late. I sort of want to dig into it now, but I guess I'll have to wait. But uh, next up is going to be the uh, tour of the new cooker. So thanks for joining. We'll get back to it tomorrow. So we're at the tail end of our initial burn-in on the Fast Eddie's PG500 pellet cooker. Uh, I thought I'd run through some of the features that, uh, that attracted me to this particular cooker. Maybe run through some of the things where it uh, fell a little bit short, um, but uh, my thoughts on those as well. Uh, so I'm going to keep this fairly brief. Um, but uh, first and foremost, the pellet hopper, not necessarily foremost, but uh, uh, the pellet hopper is uh, 22 pounds, I believe. It might be 23. Uh, it's at least 22 pound capacity. So that is nice for uh, pellet bags that are typically 20 pounds. Uh, so you can uh, fill up with a whole bag when you're getting low not have a partial bag sitting around, which is always a pain to deal with. So I thought that was a pretty cool feature and idea by uh, Cook Shack. There is a pellet hop hopper release here, so you can empty your pellets if you want to change flavors. Um, not a terribly big deal to me, but I know there are cookers out there that don't have that feature. So if it has it, as far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. I don't often suddenly decide I want to switch flavors of pellets. I typically use uh, the same flavor all the time, uh, but that could change. Uh, controller is very simple. Uh, that is a good thing. Uh, some people might also see that as a negative. So it's just a kind of a turn it on and set your temperature and it monitors it and keeps it steady, which it has kept it steady throughout this burn, uh, which I have it set at uh, 400. So it's been hovering anywhere from 380 to 411, which for me is, is good. Uh, you know, it's never exact. Um, if you find the cooker that has it exact all the time, uh, keep it and buy another one. Um, there are no probe ports though, so it does not monitor meat temperatures or allow you to add extra probes. Uh, to me, that is not that big of a deal. I use my uh, Thermoworks signals all the time. It's uh, more accurate than any cooker I've ever seen. And this cooker does have a port there on the left for running probes in. So it not having any built-in probes for me was not that big of a deal. Uh, while we're on the outside of the cooker, uh, notice the smokestack. I'll talk a little bit more about the uh, smoke exit uh, when we open the cooker doors, but it's got a nice little cover there for uh, any kind of weather that uh, uh, you might be cooking in. Uh, the side shelf comes standard, and it's got a ton of hooks in order to hang tools, which is nice. Um, I don't need a lot of uh, places to hang tools, so I, I wouldn't have called this uh, critical or a decision-making uh, point for me. Uh, but the more the better. Um, the cooker that this is replacing is the Weber Smoke Fire, which if you follow my channel, you know my thoughts on that Weber Smoke Fire. Um, and it only had two hooks to hang. Uh, the other thing I have coming that I don't have uh, yet is a front shelf, and I'm looking forward to getting that. Uh, my last uh, cooker did not have a front shelf. I could have gotten one, but I didn't. Uh, this one does have a front shelf add-on, which I have added. And while we're looking out here, notice this grate. They sort of call it like a fish grate, so if you're uh, smoking some fish and don't want it to fall through, it's got a really fine mesh. And that's an add-on uh, grate that you can replace the one that is in the cooker that we'll look at soon. Um, so uh, not that expensive. Uh, so I decided to go ahead and add that just to, uh, to uh, have that option. Uh, while we're down here, four casters, pretty heavy duty, all locking. Um, just uh, real well made. And, and speaking of that, <clears throat> this whole cooker is so well put together. Uh, stainless steel. Um, all the welds, uh, the molding, just everything uh, that's done is done in a heavy-duty way and is very, very uh, 
well put together. And I had heard that and seen that in my research. So certainly one of the factors that I took into account, uh, obviously got the stay cool handles. Uh, a couple things down here, these drawers, the one on the left it, here is an ash clean out. So your ash will generally fall into that drawer um, and you'll be able to vacuum it out or dump it out. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some clean out to do inside the cooker as well as far as ash goes because in pellet cookers, not all of the ash falls in my experience on any pellet cooker I've ever had. Uh, and this is cool. This is a warming drawer. So you can actually... Uh, uh, keep things warm in there. Uh, you can also cold smoke in there. From what I understand, that drawer will stay around half the temperature of the uh, temperature you set the cooker at. Uh, and it seems to be uh, doing just that. I've got a probe in there just to monitor it. It's running 174 degrees in there now, and the cooker is running 385, something like that, 384. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you can use it as a cold smoking drawer as well. Um, so that's neat. Um, this cooker is not insulated. It's, it's a good gauge stainless steel, so that's good, but there is no insulation. So if I touch that, it's going to be very hot. Um, I, I'm not worried about that from a getting burned standpoint. Um, we'll see how it cooks in really, really cold weather. I'm sure like anything, it will just use more pellets. Uh, I'm not overly concerned about that. And honestly, you could use the top for warming something, sauce or whatever, if you want. Um, because the doors are a French door style. They open uh, to the side, so you can use the top for things like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and open the doors. And we'll show you how the convection and the cooking actually works in here. So the fire pot is on the left. Uh, it is burning down there now. You can probably see it a little bit in the camera. The smoke travels up and around the cooker, and the smoke exit is down in the lower right where the uh, uh, chimney connects to. So the smoke convex up, over, and around, and the firebox there is completely separate from where you would lay any kind of meat you were cooking low and slow. I thought that was a really neat feature. Um, don't really have to worry about hot spots as much that way. And one of the advantages to this cooker, and it's part of their value proposition, is you can cook over direct fire here. So if you wanted to reverse sear a steak and cook it slowly on the right side and then move it to the left side to, to sear it off directly over the fire, you can do that. And I hope you can see just how uh, thick that grate is. Uh, it's 400 degrees right now, so I'm not going to pick it up, but I bet that thing weighs 12 pounds. It is heavy. Um, it's got a top rack as well that easily comes out if you need the space. The one thing I do like about it, though, and while I haven't cooked anything on this yet, that'll be later, is it's high enough that you can reach in and uh, reach the back of the lower grate without brushing your hand against the uh, top grate. Um, obviously, uh, easily removed too if you need to. In the back, you've got the ambient probe. That's how the uh, cooker tells you the ambient probe inside, which, by the way, my probe that I have installed here from my ThermoWorks signal and the temperature probe in the cooker have been real close the whole time. Um, so, within 20 degrees of each other which again, in my experience, uh, there's always a disparity. Um, you know, different spots in the cooker have different uh, ambient temperatures at any given point in time, but I've been pretty happy in the initial burn-in with uh, the way they have uh, correlated my own probe uh, versus the one that's provided uh, in the cooker. So again, the French doors, Another cool thing, you don't have to hope open your entire cooker up. If you just have something on the left and you want to open that door, you can. Same with the door on the right. Uh, the cord is built into the cooker, so it's not something you pull out and, uh, and roll up. Um, uh, there is no place to um, wind up and the cord and have it held by the cooker. So... I don't really care that much about that, um, but some people might uh, miss miss that. I will just wind it up and band it, and, and it'll just hang there, and it's really not that big of a deal to me. Um, 
So, whoa. My gimbal here is acting crazy. Um, so notice the hinges, just uh, a point uh, again about how well made this is, the hinge stop there, how thick that metal is. So, so far I'm really pleased with the build quality and, and that was something I definitely researched. I, I knew this uh, wasn't going to be a flimsy, flimsy cooker. Uh, the weight on it is 330 pounds. So it is uh, pretty significant. It does wheel around very easily. I wheeled it from the garage to the back uh, patio here with the, uh, uh, the paver stones. Rolls easily over that. Um, so I think that's about all I have for right now. So stay tuned for future videos and cooks that I do on this. I'm certainly looking forward to doing that. Um, I think tomorrow we're going to do a... Uh, uh, dry aged or, or, or sort of dry aged uh, prime rib roast um, before the holidays. So I am definitely going to do that on here, but I've got some other things planned as well. So this is uh, the newest addition to the Buckeye Barbecue Cooker Arsenal. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. I, I have not found a lot of the uh, Cook Shack Fast Eddie's uh, cookers used in videos. So hopefully uh, I'll start adding uh, some more out there in the YouTube world and uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, if you like this video if it gave you some idea about this cooker please uh, do like the video and subscribe to the channel I would appreciate it and we'll see you next time at Buckeye Barbecue